A major risk of invasive procedures is the introduction of pathogens through contact of a medical device with mucous membranes or sterile tissues of the patient. According to the Spalding classification criteria, medical devices are divided into three categories, non-critical, semi-critical, and critical, based on the degree of risk of infection related to the use of the device. Flexible endoscopes are classified as semi-critical as they come into contact with mucous membranes during their use and should, at the very least, be reprocessed by high-level disinfection. Reusable accessories such as biopsy forceps and sphincterotomes enter sterile body cavities and are critical items and should therefore be sterilized after each procedure. However, the Spalding scheme does not specify whether a device in the semi-critical category used in conjunction with a critical instrument that contacts sterile body tissues should still be considered as a semi-critical item. Furthermore, the scheme does not consider problems with the reprocessing of complicated medical equipment and steam sterilization might interfere with the delicate fiber optic equipment and other mechanical properties of these instruments. Infections with spore-forming bacteria have not been reported from appropriately high-level disinfected endoscopes. Thus, Provided that high-level disinfection is achieved, the device can remain in the semi-critical category as it should not represent an infection risk. Since its first description, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP, has evolved from a solely diagnostic procedure to an almost exclusive therapeutic intervention. New endoscopes for ERCP, duodenoscopes, are designed to limit physical discomfort, to improve imaging, to allow diagnostic and therapeutic modalities, better flexibility, maneuverability, narrowband imaging, and to facilitate reprocessability. With the increasing invasiveness of ERCP, infections are one of the most important complications. The overall incidence of infections associated with endoscopy appears to be very low. However, it is important to realize that this may be an underestimation of the true incidence. Infections and outbreaks may go unnoticed as a result of the nature of the bacterial pathogens involved and their unremarkable antibiotic resistance pattern. There is also an absence of a detailed routine follow-up program in transmission of blood bone viruses. During use in the gastrointestinal tract, endoscopes may become heavily contaminated as a result of the high bacterial load. Thorough cleaning must therefore precede high-level disinfection. Flexible endoscopes are difficult to clean and disinfect because of their complex design and multiple narrow lumens. This might explain why ERCP, which is performed with scopes that have the most complex design of all, is associated with the highest risk of infectious complications among all gastrointestinal endoscopic procedures. During the past years, carbapenem resistance has become a major source of concern for public health. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the third most common cause of healthcare-associated infections and has intrinsic resistance to various antimicrobial agents. Although resistance to carbapenems in Pseudomonas aeruginosa is often due to poor in laws, upregulation of efflux pumps, or an interplay between the two, metallo beta lactamases are increasingly reported. At Erasmus MC University Medical Center, a multi drug resistant VIM2 producing 
Pseudomonas aeruginosa clone was circulating, as was the case for other hospitals in the Netherlands. In January 2012, a peak of VIM2P aeruginosa isolate was observed compared with the endemic baseline level. In the paper entitled, Withdrawal of a Novel Design Duodenoscope Ends Outbreak of a VIM2 Producing Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Ferfai et al. report on an outbreak of VIM2 producing Pseudomonas aeruginosa that was linked to the use of a specific duodenoscope, the TJFQ180V. They carried out epidemiological investigations and molecular typing in order to identify the source of the outbreak and audits on implementation of infection control measures. Additional infection control strategies were implemented to prevent further transmission. The design and ability to clean and disinfect the duodenoscope were evaluated and the distal tip was dismantled. They found upon dismantling of the duodenoscope tip that the fixed distal cap hampered cleaning and disinfection and that the O-ring might not seal the forceps elevator axis sufficiently. The high monthly number of cases decreased below the pre-existing baseline level following withdrawal of this device from the clinical use. They conclude that duodenoscope design modifications may compromise microbiological safety. They suggest that extensive pre-marketing validation of the reprocessability of any new endoscope design and stringent post-marketing surveillance are mandatory.